Let's cross to Jordan's capital, Amman. Shaina Lowe is communications advisor for uh, one aid agency that is operating in the Gaza Strip, the Norwegian Refugee Council. Thank you for being with us here on France 24. Good evening. Uh, before I ask you about uh, the, the latest from your teams on, on the ground, uh, first off, how does uh, this uh, ban on UNRWA affect organizations like yours? Well, first of all, UNRWA is providing uh, support not just to organizations in terms of coordination, supplying fuel, but they're really the backbone of the humanitarian operation in Gaza. They have a huge infrastructure, an enormous staff, and access to communities and areas that, that many aid agencies do not have access to. So not only would would UNRWA's closure impact our operations directly, but it will have a, a cascading effect on on aid operations throughout throughout Gaza. Because talk us through it right now. When you bring, let's say, food aid into Gaza, who runs traffic on that? Yeah, well, first of all, the Norwegian Refugee Council doesn't provide food food assistance. But in terms of the assistance that we're providing, oftentimes it's UNRWA who's helping to coordinate getting that assistance to our warehouses from the crossing, sometimes even providing transportation, logistical support. Uh, really, they, they also ensuring that there's law and order in the streets and that we can safely move our convoys. They also can do coordination with Israeli authorities to ensure that, that uh, convoys' routes will not be targeted and will be clear of, of active hostilities. What do you make of it? The, the closure of UNRWA will undoubtedly have catastrophic effects, not just on the humanitarian response, but of course on the Palestinians who were there to serve. The, the, the hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians in Gaza are reliant on humanitarian assistance. 90% of people have been displaced and, and uh, putting up continuous blockages to aid reaching Palestinians in need is the absolute opposite of what we re need right now. We need reinforcement of, of UNRWA, reinforcement of aid operations, protection of our staff, and the ability to reach Palestinians in need no matter where they are. Uh, right now, what are your teams telling you? It's been a, a fierce few days right now, particularly in the north of the Gaza Strip. I was on the phone earlier today with one of my colleagues. The situation in the north continues to, to get worse and worse as aid agencies have no access to, to the 100,000 or so Palestinians who are trapped in, in northern Gaza, completely besieged. We have been providing support in north Gaza, in, in Gaza City, uh, providing drinking water to, uh, to clean drinking water to internally displaced people at some collective sites. Over the weekend, we were able to resume uh, distributing water after a three-day suspension due to a lack of fuel uh, to run the water pumps. But on Saturday night, for example, there was a strike on one of the schools that we operate in, and one person was killed, several others were injured. Our teams were back there the next day to deliver water, but the circumstances and the conditions there continue to be extremely difficult and, it, and, and, and almost impossible for aid agencies to overcome. Norway has said that it's uh, going to ask the uh, International Court of Justice to clarify Israel's aid obligations to Palestinians. Your thoughts on that? Well, I think the it, I mean any any legal body uh, reinforcing what Israel's obligations are, are clear, but we know that Israel as the occupying power has an obligation to facilitate aid two Palestinians living under its control in the Gaza Strip if they're unwilling to or unable to provide those services. Uh, the International Court of Justice has, has issued a number of, of provisional measures calling on Israel to increase the amount of aid access that is able to access Gaza. And yet we've seen time and again Israeli obstructions preventing aid from, from, reaching, uh, from reaching agencies. We've had only one truck enter Gaza in the last month that we've been able to deliver supplies to people in need. And how many are waiting? Dozens of trucks are waiting uh, in Egypt to cross into, into Israel for screening and then to go through the Karim Shalom 
or the gate 96 crossing so that we can provide shelter assistance, uh, uh, mattresses, blankets, sealing off kits to help people winterize and prepare uh, to be protected from the, the in elements as it's starting to get cool at night here. And, and we know that the rainy season is, is almost upon us. Shane Alo of the Norwegian Refugee Council, thank you so much for speaking with us here on France 24. Thank you.